Hello everyone and welcome to today's webinar which is going to talk about introduction to Microsoft Dynamics Lifecycle Services. My name is Kuldeep Singh and I'll be your host today for today's webinar. So without any further ado, let's get started. I welcome you all through all our streaming media channels and through all our distributed access points. So let's start working with this particular webinar on today's agenda. So today we would be discussing on introduction to lifecycle services, what, does, what that is and how do, do we start working with that. Starting with that, let's talk about the today's agenda, which is a tight 45 minute schedule, talking about a brief overview of lifecycle services, followed by the top level concepts, which we would be discussing in regards to Dynamics lifecycle services. How do we do from project onboarding all the way to post core life support down there? At the same point of time, we'd be having few demonstrations over LCS portal, followed by some quick question and answers. So let's start discussing in terms of what is lifecycle services. It is a turnkey solution from Microsoft, which will help you manage all your project life cycles right from the planning up to the post life support down there. So the Dynamics LCS provides regularly updated services. And when we talk about that, it gives you the right information at the right time to the right set of people. And that will help you smooth delivery of your project across in there. As the name suggests, it's specially for Dynamics uh, and Microsoft Dynamics 365 implementations. Along with that, LCS is available to customers as well as partners as part of their support plans. So when we talk about LCS, what is it contained? Let's talk about some of the top level concepts available in there. Having said that, what does that stand for? The Lifecycle Services Portal help you managing your projects. It will help you applying methodologies associated to your projects, how it's gonna work, how do you start working with the project methodologies down there. What is my BPM, the business process modelers, where we can see them, how can we access them, uh, a top level concept we'll be discussing about. Uh, what are my cloud hosted environments and on top of it, is it a Microsoft managed hosted environment or is it a customer managed environment down there? Both are hosted on Microsoft Azure. What is issue search? How we can see them, how we can get them access down there. At the same point of time, we would be discussing a little bit about our asset libraries. Uh, is it a project specific asset library or is it a shared assets library? We would also be discussing a little bit about our environment monitoring section down there. So as you can see that it will help you define, develop and operate all your project lifecycle through this LCS portal. So let's get started with some of the demonstrations we would be discussing in this webinar, which will involve creating a, a, a example project from LCS portal, understanding the difference between asset libraries and where we can see them. So let's get started with them one by one. For that, I'm gonna take you to my browser in here. Let me quickly open my browser and I'll be moving to no. the LCS portal associated with that. When we talk about our here. LCS, Hello. When we talk about our LCS portal of strategies and capabilities, we would be discussing Hello. about Can't various concerns associated. So let me have that option enabled in there and we would be discussing all these options associated with the help of our uh, LCS portal and, and the quick demonstrations as part of that. When we talk about working with that particular segment, we would be discussing multiple options which are available to all these different channels. We would be discussing about projects, we would be discussing about associations and how we can start working with all those options available in there. Now, when we talk about how does it start, how do we start utilizing our LCS portal, let's get started. So in this very first demonstration, we are creating a very first sample project associated within the LCS portal. So I'm in here and let's see, I've got plenty of projects created over here already. I would like to create a new project down there. And when I'm in there, it is asking me to select the type of the project I'm about to create as part of this LCS project library. Now, having said that, how does it work? Let's take an example. 
My project type could be a prospective pre-sales. It could be a pre-sales type of proof of concepts type of project environment down there. Uh, it could be a migration project. Uh, it could be an implementation project. It could be an on-prem implementation of any of your underlying D365 technology down there. So let's say I'm talking about the prospective pre-sales. And when I do that, it is asking us to provide few names over here, which will help us creating this LCS project right associated in there. So let's say I'm talking about a demo D365 project. Ideally, it should be a meaningful name uh, provided by the client name or a client specific name down there. Along with the description in here, uh, what is the product on top of which you are implementing this project? We can always select the product right from here, depending on what kind of partner or customer level access you do have. So in this example, let's say I'm talking about finance and operations, for example, I'm giving up the versions down there. What is the industry specific functionality we would like to enable as part of this project enablement functionality. So let me go down and I'm talking about that belongs to manufacturing industry. I can have roles, things imported from different projects, but at this point of time, let me just click on create and I actually created a sample project based on a, a learn, try and buy methodology down here. Important thing to discuss here, is it open to all? I mean, is it accessible to all? Depends when you talk about the LCS portal down there. Let me open another incognito window down there and I'm moving to my LCS portal one more time just to show you a little bit in terms of authentication and authorization. As usual, it is asking me to sign in and let's say I'm talking about providing my uh, personal email address which may or may not be associated to any of the projects down there. Let me quickly have that listed in here. I'm keying in the user ID password And when I do so, I pass the authentication area down there and then it is going to take me to the LCS portal. And right now you can see that it's telling me something went wrong. You can't sign into LCS before there is no entitlement associated with you. So what does it mean? I do not belong to any customer with this specific uh, logged in email address. I do not belong to any partner in there. I'm, I'm not even a part of any of LCS project. So question, is LCS open to everyone? Uh, Mel, maybe yes or not, but broadly it's a no because you can log into LCS portal only if, number one, you are part of an existing project. Number two, you're part of a partner or customer organization which allows LCS login to those users down there. So. That's one quick thing about if you're not able to access LCS, probably these three are the major reasons why you're not able to do that. On top of it, once we create a sample project that comes up with various functionalities, I just created a project which does have a project methodology down there. I can change it, which does have an area for environments over here, the cloud hosted environments, which can be listed. Uh, once you click on that breadcrumb icon, that gives you access to these multiple options, which are available to every single LCS project in terms of project settings, issue search, diagnostics, uh, customer managed cloud hosting environments, work items, and all those functionalities down there. We'll be covering them one by one. If we take you to my presentation, there was a very first thing, how can you create a project from the LCS portal provided you do have access to your LCS portal down there. So this was a quick demonstration talking about how can we create a new project into the LCS portal. Second, we have a concept of understanding the assets libraries. How does it work as part of our lifecycle services portal? So there are two categories to be specified from one. It could be a project specific asset library. It could be a shared assets library. Let's take a look on both of them. How does that work and what exactly this stands for in there? So I'm taking you to my demonstration environment one more time right over here. And let me click and I'm going to open my LCS in a different portal here. Once again, I'll show you both of them one by one. So over here, if I go to my LCS down here uh, at, at the home page on, on the LCS portal and I'll be clicking on shared asset library. 
Well, as the name suggests, it is a shared, a global asset library, which will give you plenty of items down there categorized with multiple categories. So let me click on that shared assets library. It is loading in the background. In the meanwhile, if I go to a different tab here and the project which I created, that was my demo D365 project created by this uh, gold partner down here. Let me click OK and I'm inside that project. And now once I click on that breadcrumb icon, I'm going to click on my asset library. So these are the two things which we were talking about one which we access from inside the project right over here and second which we do it from the home page the shared asset library let me explain you both of them one by one when we talk about the project specific asset library these are the categories these categories will remain the same whether it is project specific or whether it is shared but currently you see everything goes zero over here i don't have any business process modeler artifact i don't have any data packages database backups i don't have any uh, virtual hard disk the vhds the virtual machine vhds here i don't have any ger configurations nothing they are all empty as the name suggests these will be available either from the shared assets library or if I manually upload them right across in here. Let's move to my shared asset library down there. And there you see I've got multiple options. I've got my uh, Cortana intelligence, data packages, virtual hard drives. If you want to have an on-prem VM deployed for D365 FO with different versions, the GER configurations here, financial reports, models down there, software deployable packages. You'll see plenty of these things associated in here. For example, if I click on the software deployable packages area, once I click on that software deployable packages, I'm going to see all those packages, whether they are my data upgrade packages, whether they are my platform and application binaries down here. So let's take an example. If I've got my platform binary for a final service update for version 10 down here, 10.0.10, and I would like to include it to my project associated from there. So at any given point of time, you can add your own from here. You can pretty much add an assets from there. Or, or you can get them things from there. The scope is going to be either your organization uh, or your project specific or global right across in here. So that gives you all the assets with different categories which are available to be used in the shared assets library versus we can have the same thing to our project specific assets library as well. So if I'm on my asset library, which goes to a specific project, Let's say I'm clicking on my software deployable package. Now, once again, what is a software deployable package? We discussed that in an MB500 or different courses, different technologies, but as part of LCS, I can either click on plus, manually upload it, generated by my developers using Visual Studio, or I can import it from the shared assets library. So let me click over here. Once you click on import, it is going to give you all the SDPs, the, the software deployable packages from your shared assets library. And let's say I'm looking for the environment reprovisioning tool. Let me pick that up. That'll be available right across in here. I, I would like to import one more, for example, that would be my platform update and the binary tools update down there. So let me go over here. I'm looking for a final 10.08 or, or uh, version down there or 10.0.10 .10 down there. Let me pick this one. So once you do that, you can always include these uh, assets from your shared assets library, which is a global version, a global catalog being available at the LCS portal. Important thing to notice, once you have it, it's not like you can directly apply it. You can save it to your library if you want, or let's say I'm marking that as a release candidate. So once I mark it as a release candidate, I can start applying that to my environments right across, or if it's not, I can say not a release candidate. That will check or uncheck the marker right across in here. At the same point of time, you've got some Power BI, EPBX models down there. You got some data packages with you. You got your um, uh, retail SDK associations. You got any of your data packages, database backups down there you can always get them added in as part of your assets library when it comes to Dynamics 365 lifecycle services. So once again, it is important to understand that you have a 
project specific assets library and you have the shared assets library all right another important factor when we talk about our lts services so let's say i'm in here and um uh, I'm talking about my cloud hosted environments, which are an integral part of any of your LCS project once you create them. So for example, here I've got uh, GTIC training services. When I click on that project type, I've got my methodologies down there, multiple things. I've got some uh, project specific settings, users and all, but what is important to understand, I've got some environments in here you can see that I have no environments listed. It's it's quite zero in here. So this is an area which is known for the cloud hosted environment. Well, there is one more place. And if I click on that breadcrumb icon, I've got the cloud hosted environments here as well. So if I click on that, these two are completely different places. Now, most of the time uh, people get confused. Hey, why we have that listed at two different areas? What exactly the difference between them? Let me explain you that. When we talk about a cloud hosted environment, uh, there are categories. Of course, it is cloud hosted. It is hosted on Microsoft Azure for sure. But who is actually managing them? Is it Microsoft managed or is it a customer or partner managed down there? So when we talk about that particular stuff in there, let's say I'm on my cloud hosted environments area and there you can see that I've got the environment listed. This is finance and operations latest version. When it was actually deployed, the deployment status is completely deployed. You can directly log into the environment from here, which will take you to Dynamics 365 finance and operations or business central or customer engagement, depending on what type of project and environment have you deployed in there. Uh, you can log into your retail. It, it gives you your Azure connector, multiple things, a user ID password for these key users down there. And there you have the environment listed where you have uh, D365 finance and operations with all these modules down there. Important thing to notice, it is a cloud hosted environment for sure. But if I go to my lifecycle services and I open the same project one more time, let's go in there. I'm talking about GTEC training services. And on the right hand side in the homepage of the project, I've got no environments listed. Whereas if I click on the cloud hosted environment here, I've got my environment there. So these are two different places which we need to consider. If you're seeing anything over here, a UAT test production, golden copy, tier one, tier two, any kind of environment. If you're listing them over here, if you're seeing them listed here, they are a Microsoft managed cloud hosted environments. Okay. If you're seeing them in this particular area, on cloud hosted environments, just the way I'm seeing them right over there. These are customer managed cloud hosted environment. What does it mean? So for customer managed environments, you must have an active Azure subscription. You must have configured an Azure connector on the LCS and all the costings, the daily costing, the virtual machine, the backup, the public IP costing will be borne by the customer itself or the, 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 the account which was used to provision this particular environment. Whereas any Microsoft managed environments right from here are part of Microsoft's Azure subscription. And uh, I would say 99.5% cases, all the customers will be having Microsoft managed cloud hosted environments over here, except some use cases where if we are already having an Azure subscription, we are an Azure MSP partner, or we are uh, uh, using plenty of instances for our developers and UATs down there. So if our, I have the subscription available, I can get them deployed using a customer managed cloud hosted environments as well, right from there. So that was one thing which was talking about how the environment actually works. Important thing sometimes, uh, how do we provision an LCS environment if it is required? Well, I'm not going to do it to the end in there, but just to show you a quick demonstration, all we're going to do is click on add, and this is how do we provision our customer managed cloud hosted environment. 
You need to select the application version for any reason you would like to have all these versions to select from. Let's say 10 or 12 is the latest one. Uh, what platform update you'd like to utilize along with that? Uh, you click next over here. Then you want to select what kind of environment that is gonna be. Is it a, a demo environment for demonstration purposes or uh, you're creating a dev or test environment for development test and build purposes down there? Whatever we select in there, it is asking that what exactly you're looking for. So I'm looking for 10 or 12 with platform update 36. And then if my Azure connector is correctly configured, it is going to ask me to provide the name of the environment. So let's say D365 ENV08, whatever you want to make it. And then uh, it is a built virtual machine. What is going to be the sizing? So important thing is these are the sizes of the virtual machines on Azure portal. So on our Azure subscription, a VM is going to be created and whatever SKU for pricing and availability with the, the storage and compute you'd like to select from here, you can get them listed and you can select right across from there. What is going to be the pricing? You can check them right from here or you can go on the Azure pricing calculator to give you the estimated pricing for a specific virtual machine down there. Uh, you select that up, you click next and it will start deploying thereafter. Although it's gonna take a couple of hours setting up everything correctly and the status will be deploying and once it is deployed successfully, you will see deployed just the way right in here. So that's one example when it comes to our cloud hosted environment specifically on our LCS portals down there. All right, fair enough. Let me take you to my PowerPoint presentation here and the next segment, once we discussed our project specific assets library and our shared assets library, it is asking for the business process modeler, the BPMR effects down there. So what is actually a business process modeler? How does it work? How do we start utilizing that? So let's take an example related to that. I'm moving to my LCS portal here and every project irrespective of whatever we are creating for example for today's demonstration i actually created a project called d365 demo so let me click on that demo project what i just created and on the breadcrumb icon itself i'm seeing the business process modeler let me click over here and explain you what it is when it comes to lifecycle services and how do we start utilizing that as part of any of our projects down there. So once you're into your business pro uh, process modeler, you will see three different areas. You're gonna see the project libraries, you're gonna see the corporate libraries, you're gonna see the global libraries listed over here. Now, it's important to understand the global libraries which are published right from Microsoft the corporate libraries which are having a scope of our organization for this current partner or a customer and a project library is which is related to this specific project. I can create new everything from scratch. So when I click on new, let's say I'm going to call it GTL Pro uh, BPM 01 or should be a meaningful name ideally. Let me click on create. It will create an empty business process modeler project library why i say empty because if i click over here i'm not gonna see anything i just see the sample business process and i can start working right along with that what does it mean for example if i would like to work on that if i would like to expand and collapse if i would like to edit that i can always do that so let me take you to the project the bpm itself and right over here I would like to do and I would like to edit this particular business process uh, modal libraries. So let me click on edit. I can make the name changes, the descriptions, whatever I want to. If you would like to make some changes to that, having some child or anything added, we can always do that. Important thing is I've got these global libraries which uh, consist of the best practices, the documentations from APQC uh, for best practices, um, process modifications, the, the knowledge transfers, the knowledge management and all. So let's say for this one, what I would like to do is from March 2018, I would like to copy that and create a new business process model library out of it so my project users can start utilizing that. When I do that, let me name it as my 
ABC Inc. VPM, uh, whatever I would like to name it. And let me click on create. I'm associating this to this current project here. So I can see that I've got another business process model library here. If I click on top of it, you will see plenty of business processes along with the visual documents, the flow charts, the recorded AX task recorder files will be available as part of this sample BPM library, which we just copied from the global libraries. I can always make changes to that, add some projects, add some siblings, uh, all those things. We usually discuss that in much more detail about uh, two or three hours down the line in, in a further course called MB300 for Finance and Operations Core, where we discuss about the BPMs. But important thing is, I'll show you once it gets open, that the business process modelers can be accessed right from your project itself. So if I click on the BPM for this particular project, I don't see anything because I don't have any project libraries here. For my newly project, I created a couple of them and ABC Inc is the latest one which I created. You can see that I've got multiple things. For example, I've got 164 diagrams on deliver product and services. What if I expand that? I've got multiple things here as well. I've got uh, product materials and services, 36 diagrams underneath them. I've got my uh, uh, managed suppliers and I've got six diagrams underneath them. I've got my monitor and managed supplier information and I've got approve vendor for the products and that contains a diagram here. Now let's understand that. I've got a BPM library, a BPM artifact here called approve vendors for specific products. Uh, this is the name. It was modified by this particular person on this particular date uh, and it is APQC approved uh, knowledge uh, management uh, best practices BPM artifact here. Uh, I can edit that if I want. You want to see the diagram associated with that. You want to see the associated document with this. You might want to download or upload something right from here. So let me click on the diagram. When you go in there, it is giving you the flow chart associated with that, that says release product and you have the approved vendors there. You're adding them to the approved vendor list when it expires and all these things are managed from the all vendors pane. So I'm seeing a flow chart over here. You might have a visual diagram as well and upload your visual diagrams right from there. On top of it, I've got my detailed steps here as well. So if you want to test this BPM artifact and probably a, a good friend in case of a user acceptance testing, how do you do that? Where do you go into the application and start testing all these steps right across in there? So there was one thing which consists of plenty of business process modeler libraries. I can at any point of time start modifying them. So let's take an example. I've got multiple things here. I've got something called as manage IT down there. And underneath that, I would like to make some changes. So when you click on manage IT, I would like to take it onto the edit mode. Might want to change something over here. The industries and multiple areas, multiple things down the line. I can always do that make all those changes on there. On top of it, once you do that, you can pretty much save your changes in here. That was about changing the properties of a selected BPM artifact. What if I would like to make a new grouped BPM artifacts into my BPM library, business process modeler libraries. So let's say underneath my manage IT, I would like to add a process. It could be as a child, it could be as a sibling. Well, as the name suggests, if I'm adding it as a child, it will be parallel to these at the same level down here. If I'm adding it uh, as a child, it will be down in there. If I'm adding it as a sibling, that's going to be parallel right across in there. So let me add as a child. And as a result, my parent was selected as manage IT. And underneath that, I'm seeing a new child business process. Let me add it this. I would like to call it my uh, UAT test scripts and uh, I can supply all those changes in here but let me just save it at this point of time. I'm creating my uh, UAT test scripts down there and on my UAT test scripts I further want to add a, a child associated in here. This time the UAT test script is going to be the parent and I'm adding a child BPM artifact. What is going to be the name of that? So I would like to call it 
procure to pay for example and once my AX task recorders are ready my diagrams ready I can always upload have that diagram created I can have the document uploaded over here we can mark it as reviewed and approved and then that's how it flows in there so I can always move them up and down for example I would like to move this process so let me further move it down wherever I want to make it available. So these are the best practices how we should start working with our business process modelers. Where do we find them in our LCS projects? How can we start right from scratch or copy an existing global library or an organization library, a corporate library and make it project specific by making required changes to that. That's really helpful when we talk about our project execution right from planning, implementing, maintaining and, and post production supports down there. So that was one thing which was talking about a business process modeler. Uh, not in much detail, but a brief uh, because we are talking about an introduction to LCS services and then we have uh, last but not the least which talks about our project settings. So let's understand what does what does that stands for when I talk about a project settings I can have users associated with my project. I can have some sort of integrations with the project service down there which might be integration to DevOps, integration to SharePoint library. I can have my Azure connector down there uh, to deploy our cloud hosted environments as part of my LCS project. So let's understand that one by one. I'm going to my LCS portal here and I'm talking about the newly created project that was demo D365 project. Uh, the empty project which we just created we added uh, a few BPM libraries we customized one of them added some uh, child processes with there and then I've got my project settings right from here so once you click on the project settings let's understand what all this area contains actually so that talks about the project overview the one which we supplied during the creation of this project uh, what is the organizations and ownership so currently it's been created by us being a partner we can involve the customer a prospect here and we can transfer the ownership to the customer once the project implementation is completed uh, do you have implemented all these external integrations one of them could be your SharePoint online library so that area talks about is your LCS project integrated to your SharePoint online document library and if you want to do that all you want to do is supply the name of your SharePoint online site and get it saved and that will be available well no need to say that once you do that make sure the current logged in user does have access to that SharePoint online site uh, either as a direct user or an impersonated user and have appropriate permissions again no need to say that the, the user will also require additional licensing to log into that SharePoint online site and make it integrated with the LCS portal itself. Okay, that was one area where we can supply our SharePoint online integration association with our LCS project. I also got my Visual Studio team services. Well, this is important in here. When you talk about an end-to-end -end project, uh, probably there's going to be a team of developers, uh, quality testers, performance testers, followed by the UAT testings, could be manual and automated. And all these projects these days we talk about are CI-CD pipelines, which is a continuous integration and continuous deployment pipelines. And all these things we manage using Azure DevOps. So when we talk about that particular functionality in here, LCS provides you a way to integrate that. The user interface is a little older, which talks about you need to supply the URL of your VSTS. So Visual Studio Team Services is, is a former name, uh, which has been renamed as Azure DevOps now. So you can specify your Azure DevOps site URL and have that configured in here. 
Well, how do we do that practically? We pretty much discuss in MP500, a detailed uh, developer training talks about integrations and all those things. But the project settings is the area where you should be configuring your existing DevOps site with LCS to all the work items and all those things can be performed on your LCS project. Apart from that, you've also got the Azure connectors. The only purpose to have your Azure connector configured is if you want to have the cloud hosted environments associated with your project. Well, there are some scenarios. Uh, a client usually says, hey, is that absolutely required? Well, it depends. Uh, how you're going to have your uh, dev, dev environment, a UAT environment, a build environment, a golden copy or whatsoever. And the client says, well, we would be having them on-prem. Uh, it's gonna be our downloadable VHDs, tier one, uh, one box solutions, and we'd be having it in our, in our data center running up in here. Well, you don't need to configure your Azure connector. Another scenario, well, we have our implementation partner and we already buy those add-ons from Microsoft to configure those cloud hosted environments. In this case, you don't need that either because these are Microsoft managed cloud hosting environments. The only use case when you will be configuring the Azure connector here is when you want to have a customer managed cloud hosting environment on your own Azure subscription. So that's the area when you should be having it. Important thing is you need to authorize that and you need to add that Azure connector which will ask you to specify your Azure subscription ID um, would be the Azure management certificate needs to be uploaded on the Azure portal. So that's, that's a 15 to 20 minutes more configuration, one-time configurations. Once it's done for the project, you can start deploying your cloud hosted environments right across. To show you all these things in action, let me take you to my LCS portal here. And I'm talking about now the next project uh, which, which was already in there. So th that was the empty project what we created, but now I'm clicking on the GTEC training services, an existing project which does have a hosted environment associated in here. Let me do one thing real quick down there. I'm clicking on the project settings to show you all these things in action. One of them was my SharePoint online library. So if you see that this LCS project, which we use to deliver our, our regular instructor led trainings down there, it is already integrated with our SharePoint site down there. If you take a look on the VSTS, it is already integrated to our Azure DevOps site, uh, which is having plenty of work items we can, we can start working. The project is already integrated with an existing Azure connector, and that Azure connector is helping us to deploy customer managed or partner managed cloud hosted environments right across. So that's one quick thing what we have in here as part of that. Uh, and that was what we were discussing as part of this particular demonstration in here. But we've got few minutes left. I wanna show you one more thing real quick. The LCS is also a place from where you can do your environment monitoring. So when I talk about that, once you go to your cloud hosted environment, this is a quick brief, which is giving you like uh, the top level details, uh, the last activity, all these details, uh, Azure connector, deployment status of the VM with all these things. You can always click on full details. And once you click over here, that is going to take you to the detailed environment page where you can have all your environment monitorings, whether it is a tier one environment, tier two environment, uh, a customer managed versus a Microsoft managed down there. So important thing to notice in this case, it is a customer managed cloud hosted environment. It could be a Microsoft managed cloud hosted environment as well. What is the primary region where it's been deployed, uh, the current version and all, and you can see all these deallocations, maintaining all those things down there, applying updates, rotating those secrets and all these values. You wanna do an RDP to the virtual machine. You can have these uh, credentials used from there with all these values coming up. So that was one quick thing which we can always have is environment monitoring as part of our LCS services down there. Taking you back to the PowerPoint presentation, this, this was a quick brief overview in terms of webinar series, what we were discussing here today, guys, for the LCS introduction. 
Now, no need to say that. You can always subscribe to our upcoming events right from uh, gtechlearn.com slash webinar. So all you need to do for that is uh, visit our websites on a regular intervals go to the events area down here and that will show you all the upcoming events related to Microsoft Azure and Dynamics 365 technologies. You can always get yourself registered right from there. Uh, that was one thing which we have in here. Now, let me quickly open uh, the question and answers. I'm going to open the chat panel to everyone just in case someone have any questions to be asked. We can pretty much address them. So let's have your questions on the chat now. All right, we got a question in here. How do we supply our methodology associated to our LCS project? Well, on the LCS portal itself, when you are creating the project, you can always apply the project methodology, which could be a global, an organization, or a project specific methodology can be created and, and get it applied right across. Do we require an additional license for LCS? Well, it's not really, it's realistically a license issue. If you're a customer or partner organization, you do have access to LCS depending. All you need is you has to be a project user. Uh, you could be an environment manager, you could be a, a finance and operations user, you could be a, a project owner, you could be, so you got multiple user roles which are available in LCL itself. Uh, where we can have our issue search and other questions coming up. So that's quite easy when we talk about our LCS portal associated right across in here, depending on wherever you would like to work and start working at the same point of time. You, you pretty much click on code upgrade, configuration data managers. You go to those particular areas in here. You would like to report some issues down there. You'd like to work on any of those uh, services down there. So there are multiple areas which we are not touching today due to the time limitations. But you've got multiple things like there was a question which was talking about the user roles and all. So you, you need to go to project users and make sure the, the required members are part of your project team and they are added right across in here. You can always add them at different roles. It could be a operations user with least permissions, a project team member with LCS tools, an environment manager with LCS tools and the environment. And the project uh, owner is pretty much the topmost role you can add and invite those users right across in there. Uh, we talk about multiple areas. You want to talk about configuration and data manager to your project. You can always have it right from there. Add those configurations right from, uh, from this particular area across in there. At any given point of time, when you are at any of your environment associated, you might want to see uh, the RDP information. You can pretty much have it from there. Okay, got another question here talking about how do we integrate LCS to our on-prem implementations? Well, for that you have to ensure when you are creating a new project here, when you're adding that project, make sure it is an on-prem implementation and then your environment will get added over there to the LCS portal and you can start utilizing those functionalities. Uh, some users have reported that they're not seeing the on-prem implementation option with them. Well, because you, you haven't subscribed to that particular offer from Microsoft, being a partner or a customer, that has to be enabled by Microsoft so you can start accessing it from your LCS portal itself. Uh, question, can we access it with our personal email addresses? Most probably no, unless those emails are already invited as part of a project down there. Okay, perfect. So great. Uh, so that was what we had as part of this particular demonstration, guys. It was really nice having you all in this webinar. Keep following us on our social media channels. The recordings of this webinar will be made available to our YouTube channel and you'll see a notification in your email coming up for the same. So thank you very much once again. I'll see you later. Keep tuning us and thank you all for joining us with these distributed channels over Teams, over Zoom, over live streamings and I'll see you next week with the upcoming webinars. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.